right? In the current system, the state government votes only take the examination. The entire thing is done by the, you know, high court. Hello friends, uh, good afternoon. Uh, today we will discuss challenges for Indian judiciary. This is uh, Dr. Mishendra Chha and today we will discuss about what are the basic what are the basic challenges for Indian judiciary and what are the you know way forward how do these challenges can be you know uh, solved. So well, let me talk about what are the challenges for Indian judiciary. Before I uh, discuss, you know, uh, challenges, let me brief what is Indian judiciary and what are what is what are its structure and uh, you know how it works basically. If you look at Indian judiciary, Indian judiciary is basically independent and integrated institution, right? Indian judiciary is an independent and integrated. Uh, institution. Now, what is independent? Right. If you look at independent, it means it is independent from executive and independent from legislature. So, we look at you know it is an independent institution. Right. It means it is independent from executive and legislature. Now it is integrated and integrated is what do you mean by integrated institution? It means you know at the top we have Supreme Court. Right below the Supreme Court there is a High Court. Below the High Court there is a District Court and below the District Court there is a you know subdivisional court. And below the subdivision, there is the Pratnaya. Right? Now, if you look at, you know, uh, if I talk about subordinate judiciary, from district court to the lower court, all are for subordinate judiciary. And approximately, there are 665 subordinate judiciary in India. Right? If you talk about high court, uh, there are 20 high courts in India. In few states, there is an independent high court, but few states shares high court. For example, Goa and Maharashtra, both shares high court. Like, you know, uh, Haryana and Punjab, both the states share a uh, high court. So there are 20 high courts and the Supreme Court is located in Delhi, right? And the Supreme Court is the highest court of appeal, right? Supreme Court is and like a highest court of appeal. Now look at the challenges if I talk about if you want judiciary right up it. Now if you look, there are lots of cases pending before the judiciary. So first challenges if I talk about there's a backlog of cases. So if you look at backlog cases, these are the first challenges that each and judiciary is facing. And if I talk about, there are approximately, you know, five crore cases are pending before judiciary. And out of five crore, approximately, you know, 4.9 euro uh, cases are pending before the subordinate court. Now, if you look at the high court, you know, um, approximately, you know, 40 lakh cases are or 50 lakh cases are pending before the High Court and before Supreme Court approximately you know 40,000 right uh, 50,000 cases are pending before the Supreme Court so when you look at you know the backlog of cases there are you know approximately 5 crore cases are pending Before 
you can share it. Now, after quite a little you look at, you know, the lower pole. Or the, we also call it subordinate core. Here you have, you know, approximately, you know, four five, five core cases that are in here. Now, when you look at, uh, you know, high code here, approximately, you know, 40 to 50 lakh, 40 lakh cases are pending here. Now, if you look at the Supreme Court, here you can find approximately 50,000 cases are pending. Right? So, if you look at, you know, um, this is, these are the first crisis that the is facing. Now, if you look at uh, why this is the highest uh, case, so why there are such, uh, you know, pending, why there is a backlog. Let me tell you, government is the, you know, litigant and largest, I say largest litigant in the court. For example, there are, you know, Maharatna, Navratna, these are Navratna, like OHGC. Now there are, uh, you know, the government actually fight with the people. So government fights cases against people. So government is, you know, the highest uh, litigate in the judiciary. Now second, if you look at second crisis that Indian judiciary is facing, which is, you know, the insufficient number of judges per million population. Now we look at second is insufficient number of judges. Now if you look at, uh, for example, a UK, there is uh, 51 judges for the million population. Now if you look at uh, China, now, China, <coughs> I mean 159 judges for the million population. Right? Now if you look at India, if I talk about India, right, it is only 20, approximately 20 judges per year population. So you can see that, you know, Indian judiciary lacks staff or judge. Right, so there is this, uh, you know, uh, insufficient number of judges in Indian judiciary. If you talk about USA, here, if you talk about USA, USA has one to seven judges, judges per million population. So lack of or insufficient number of judges are the also, you know, this is the challenges that in the judiciary is facing. Now let me talk about the third challenge is that in the judiciary faces. The third is the vacancy in judiciary. Vacancy in judiciary. There is a already, you know, insufficient number of judges in the Indian judiciary, right? Even then, there are vacancies. Now, if you look at, you know, the Supreme Court, right? High Court and Lower Court. The most of the vacancies are in the Lower Court. Approximately, you know, 5,000, right? Approximately 5,000 seats are vacant in the Southern Judiciary. If I talk about a uh, high court, approximately, you know, 426 are vacant in the high court. There are 20 high courts in India. So there are, you know, approximately total 420 approx. It's sometimes 420, some, it increases and decreases, right? Now we get Supreme Court. Sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three, depends on type of time. So if you look at, you know, there is a vacancy in English judiciary, right? And this is the also challenges, right? Now look at the next challenge before you get judiciary, right? Now if you look at next challenge, it is ad hoc judging. Now you know that ad hoc means not permanent. Judges are appointed on a hoc basis, and in that case, the hoc uh, judges are not actually able to take decisive decision, right? A final decision. Now, sometimes you know, the judges, you know, are in fear of losing their job if they take very, you know, final or decisive decision. 
very stringent decision, very strong decision. In such case, if you know this, this is a chilly impact on our Indian tradition, right? So if you look at the idea of Jesus, now next is if you look at nepotism. Now if you look at Indian tradition, you know the Jesus are pointed to the religion system. And if you look at, you know, as per the newspaper report, Approximately 300 family actually controls Indian higher judiciary, right? And there is a high nepotism in Indian judiciary, right? Now, if you look at 300 family only, so that there are elite control on Indian judiciary, right? And it is very difficult for common person to become a judge, right? Now, this is a how do you look at six corruption. The corruption. Now, this is the one big challenge is in judiciary. If you look at, you know, one, you know, corruption report, and if you look at which are the institutions which are most corrupt in India, you can find three. One is judiciary, second is a police, third is politician. And all of, you know, uh, judiciary, subordinate judiciary are actually categorized as the most corrupt, right? And that's why common person are very hesitant to go to um, court, right? And they want to settle down matter outside of the court, not, you know, and don't want to go to the court. So these are the basic challenges before the Indian judiciary, right? Now let me talk about what are the recommendations? What are the way out? What are the way for what? To solve this challenges for Indian judiciary. Now, before we offer certain solution, there are already, you know, a report called Niti Ayo report um, titled as India at 75. Basically, this report offers certain recommendations. So first, let's see Niti Ayo report, say, you know, statement. If you look at the Niti Ayo report, you know, India at 75. Basically, this report has given certain recommendation, you know, to solve the problem that Indian judiciary faces. First recommendation we have has given that segregate critical cases from the civil cases. Right? So first is segregate. Segregate, you know, criminal cases, civil and criminal cases, and take immediate steps to resolve. So, this is the first you know, uh, recommendation given by NITI, right? Now, second, it has given recommendation, second recommendation was set up a fast track home, right? Set up a fast track home, right? To resolve uh, civil cases and criminal cases. Now, before it had given that Fill the vacancy. Right? Fill the vacancy. Now, we have seen that in Indian judiciary, there are many positions which are vacant, not filled. Right? To fill the vacancy. Now, we look at fourth, it talked about that, you know, ensure adequate fund and infrastructure. Ensure adequate fund and infrastructure, right, to judicial. Now, think that the financial, uh, you know, the fund that is being spent on in, spent uh, on in judiciary is very less, it's not sufficient, right? 
And if you can talk about the infrastructure, of the industry is really, you know, it is in crisis. So we look at the infrastructure of in the industry. We discuss infrastructure of in the industry. Right? How this uh, in infrastructure are which basically in bad shape. Now these are the DPIO recommendation. Now what we get offered, right? Now apart from this, that you know, now the fifth that we can add that the judiciary should be more inclusive and should it should include you know more judges from vulnerable classes, SC, ST, and women, right? Even C V Ramna, the former Chief Justice of India had argued that women should be included, right, to make Indian judiciary and other institutions more democratic. So even if you look at, you know, Nari Shakti, Vardana, Vardana Adhiniya, government has passed in order to include women in the political process, right, in parliament and in state assembly. So inclusive of vulnerable class. Now, if you look at inclusion of become more social efficient markets, crops. Now, Indian judiciary includes you know, the women, uh, SC, SD, judges, it will make Indian judiciary more democratic and you know, more inclusive, right? So, that is even CV Ramna, right? CV Ramna was a former judge and he talked about, you know, he argued advocated that women should be included in the judiciary and in other institutions in order to make you know, um, the public institution more democratic and more inclusive. Right? So inclusion of socially disadvantaged group like SC, STs, uh, OBCs, right? Uh, then if you look at you know women, right? If you look at you know a homosexual people, right? Recently, a uh, one you know, homosexual, right? You know, had been recommended for the judges in Delhi High Court, but government has not actually, uh, you know, uh, given support. And that's why that person remained uh, deprived of judge, right? So, LGBTI. So, inclusion of these groups make more you know, democratic and inclusive. Now, apart from this, if you look at, you know, what if, you know, there should be increase the age of retirement of judges, right? In, especially in the high, high court. If you look at high court, the age re retirement age is 62. If you look at retirement is in uh, Supreme Court, it is 65. So there is a three year difference. And that's why sometimes what happens, you know, the High Court judge wants elevated to the Supreme Court so that they can ensure, you know, three extra year job for themselves. And that means there are lots of network and nepotism working in the judiciary, right? So increase, <laughs> increase the retirement. is for it. Right, so for example, Supreme Court, sometimes Supreme Court is apparently retired, but they are actually, you know, they can serve more. Now, if you look, look at the life expectancy, that has actually, that has increased in India. So, you know, there should be increase in the retirement age for judges, you know, especially in the high Right? Now, if you look at High Court, retirement is, is 62. If you look at Supreme Court, retirement age is, is 65. So, I, at least you get the, what government can add, the government can equalize it is. So that, you know, there cannot be, you know, the High Court judges cannot be come to it in race so that they can come to the Supreme Court and serve three extra years, right? They can save for their job. They can save their job, right? So, 
that is the the one or uh, one um um you know um solution that can be right now apart from this you know uh apart from this what if uh, there's a debate that all india judicial i uh, think a uh, judicial uh, commission like upsc can create right so create on india judicial commission in order to recruit recruit you know um candidate right uh, so like upsc we must appeal for india judicial uh, commission now to look at on 26 november 2023 this two year uh, two months ago the you know, honorable uh, president Dr. Moimu had talked about that India needs to create a foreign data vision commission, right, in order to solve the problem in judiciary. That can be the one judicial reform, right? So these are the actually solution to the problem of judiciary, right? We have seen challenges, we have seen solution. Now, if you look at, I I told you that I will talk about the judicial. What is the real problem of infrastructure in in the district? So let me show you some, uh, you know, some some data, right? Now if you look at the the you no know, inadequate or infra problem of infrastructure. Problem of infrastructure uh, in Indian division. Before I should actually talk about problem of infrastructure in Indian judiciary, let me you know go back and let me talk about more one more that you know I actually missed that. Maybe I have had also given one more solution, right? To actually you know increase the use of technology in Indian judiciary, right? So you know use modern technology. For you know, for you know, timely and transparent transparent judicial judicial dealing, right? So that was also one solution I was mentioning. Now let me talk about the problem of infrastructure in 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 the judicial. Now, if you look, have, I have talked about. If you look at, there are, there are six sixty-five subordinate courts in India. Now, if I talk about the subordinate courts and their infrastructure problem, now let me tell you the forty percent of subordinate courts have funds that back. Right, as for the newspaper report, only forty percent, you know, suburban court. Have funds well back. Right now, let me tell you, only fifty percent, fifty-one percent, suburban courts have level. Right, only a five percent subordinate courts have medical facility. Medical facilities, right? Only a twenty-seven percent courts are computerized. Computerized. Now look at these are the. Major infrastructure, and if you look at CV right now, you go for more CGI. Actually, in advocacy to create, you know, the All India National Judicial Infrastructure Infrastructure Authority. So he advocated to create national. Advocated to create 
नेचुरल जुडिशियल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर अर्थात अथॉरिटी टू एड्रेस द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर दैट इंडियन जुडिशरी इज फेसिंग टुडे राइट सो and if you look at government has what it is initiated now let me tell you you know law law and order is no state issue now government has already initiated centrally sponsored program to create infrastructure but at the same time the central government have already already stated that the state you know different states also promote right and 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 develop the required infrastructure for Indian judiciary, right? So we have seen the infrastructure problem. Now let me talk about the whole India judicial system that there is a debate. Debate on all India judicial system. All India judicial system. We have seen on November twenty uh, three, November twenty six, two thousand twenty, the the date was the constitutional adoption day, right? The constitution day that we call. On that day, Supreme uh, our honourable uh, President Drupadi Murmu has actually raised the voice, and she talked about that you know India needs uh, all India judicial services. To diversify, to diversify the division. Now, like you, we see all India judicial services can be created in order to, you know, recruit, in order to train, in order to, you know, <clears throat> uh, make the uniformity in all India judicial. Right now, look at what are the current position. Right, how now how judges are appointed. In several states. Now, so first, let me talk about what are the current method and what is the actually solved method. So, what is the what will be the method of all India judicial services? And if the all India judicial services are be created, what can be the challenges? Right? What can be the pro and cons for the all India judicial services? So, let me talk about that. Like, if you look at Currently, different states have different, uh, you know, examination on you know state judicial services examination. So examination is taken by the state. If you look at exams are taken by the state. Now after the state takes the examination, now interview is taken by by high court judge. The high court judges actually takes the, you know, the interview, and then you know, uh, if you look at accordingly, they recruit. Now each state actually vary in terms of recruitment, in terms of salary and allowances, in terms of training, in terms of if you look at reservation, in terms of eligibility criteria, in terms of you know, uh, rules of recruitment. Right, so there are different states have different rules. Different states have different eligibility criteria. Different states have different, you know, salary and allowances. So there is a no uniformity among different states, you know, for recruitment. So there is a record recruitment problem. There is a problem of recruitment. No uniformity in recruitment training. Eligibility criteria, salary and allowances. So there is a difference. Now, secondly, this is the cost issue that with the current recruitment. Now, secondly, if you look at the presence of socially disadvantaged. Presence of SC, ST, OBC, women in in the judiciary, right? In in state. Now, as for India Justice Board, 
I'm talking about this is India Justice Report 2023. If I talk about if you look at only 30%, 35% judges are women. Only 30, 35% judges are women. Now, you know, I talk about uh, SEST, right? The SEST uh, recruitment in state judiciary are below the their population, right? As for as, as for as the OBC is concerned, their representation is far below, uh, in you know, in proportion to their population. So there is a you know, there is a problem. Now, for issue is if you look at the current status, as we have seen that there are a large number of seats are vacant. Right now, this is the problem with the current appointment. You know, current social economic background of the sovereign judiciary and the the vacancy, vacancy right now look at the debate what are the consider tomorrow there is a all india services all india judicial services right now what would be the advantage if you look at Advancing and she will so also see this advantage. Now, what are the advantages when we have all India digital services? Now, when we we'll have when we can we can you know secure certain number of increase in women reporting, right? So and we can also ensure uh, reservation according to. Uh, their population of SC, ST, OBC, and so on, right? So first, we can ensure, um, you know, uh, you know, right? So judiciary can can ensure representation of women, SCs, STs. And OBCs, right? If yes, LG, BTQ, right? Now, thirdly, now there can be uniform uniformity in Indian judiciary regarding appointment, regarding training, regarding salary and allowances, regarding eligibility criteria. Yeah. So it will bring, you know, you know. The Olympia Judicial Services, AITS, you know, can bring uniformity. Olympia Judicial Services can bring uniformity regarding not the nature with criteria. Eligibility. Criteria, law no, of uh, training, salary, and allowances. Right? Right? And so on. Now, they can, you know, bring more transparency. Right? And go away with the properties of that is predicted in the Right? So, on India Judicial Services, it can it can ensure more transparency, right? Or it can ensure you have more transparency in the Indian division. Right? So there can be less corruption and more transparency. Less nepotism, more transparency in Indian division. Now apart from here. Now, if it's apart from that, now it can promote the young, you know, educated people like UBSC promotes young educated people to come to, you know, to uh, become a bureaucrat and play a very vital role in nation building. Similarly, all in the digital services can ensure or can promote, right, the young mind to come to 
and to uh, you know become a judge and you know shape the nation in the right direction. So this is our advantages. Now look at the vision. One of the vision advantages it has, right? If all India digital services had been created. Now look at this set of answers. Look at the this set of answers. Now what this set of answers will be? Now if you see, you know, um, uh, different states. Different states uh, are unique. Like for example, Kerala is different from Bihar. Or Haryana is different from Bengal. Now this is our not only are due to in regional languages, but you know, sometimes you know, the documents are also available in regional languages. So, open you know, custom tradition and tradition and culture play a very significant role in you know, uh, in delivering justice, right? And therefore, it will be bring uniformity. If you put a Kerala, right, the young mind from Kerala to, you know, in, in, in Bihar, he will not, he may miss the natural justice, right? He may not understand the customs, traditions, uh, you know, a language and the sentiment, right, which is very important in delivering justice, right? So uniformity can bring, you know, that, that component of Indian subordinate judiciary, right? Right. Otherwise, you know that, you know, appointment of High Court and Supreme Court are done by the college system, right? Now, if you look at, so this is the first issue, right? First issue is the uniformity may damage the, you know, the judicial system. Secondly, if you look at, you know, uh, if there is only India judicial services. Can ensure the hundred percent, you know, uh, appointment. So, you know, like for example, we have UPS, and can we say that UPSC had ensured hundred percent uh, appointment? Now, if you look at, if I say twenty to twenty-two percent of uh, seats are vacant in civil services, right? In seven, you know, for bureaucracy. So similarly, if, if UBC is not ensuring 100% appointment, how all in the judicial services, like UBC, UBA, you know, the Union Public Service Commission can ensure 100%, you know, vacancy. So this is the one issue. Now, if you look at, you know, the, if you look at the third, Third uh, problem. Now, if you look at when the young mind joined in the judiciary, their case is uh, approximately 13 by sometimes 14. Now, if you look at uh, they are from the local and they are actually settled down. They are advocates, right? They are advocates uh, serving to the local uh, court, right? And local people, they have local network. Now, if you see uh, they, uh, they are recruited. Would they be ready to go um, other states? Would they be ready to leave their regional network and go to the other state? So that would be the problem for uh, you know the in this record. Now, if you look at in the current system, right? In the current system, the state government votes only take the exams. The entire thing is done by the you know high court. Now, I could train, I could appoint them, I could transfer them, right? I could remove the judiciary, judges of the subordinate courts. Now, if all India judicial services actually take the power of, you know, appointment, transfer, uh, you know, removal, then what will happen? Now, if you look at the integrity of the judiciary. Now, integrity, I had taught the in initial phase of the class. Now, what is integrity? Now, before the, if you look at, at the top, there is Supreme Court. At the top, there is the High Court. Then we have District Court. Now, High Court controls the District Court. Right? High Court and other courts. High Court controls. Now, this control will sit to the right. 
प्राइगनोस्टिक मॉडल का सेंट्रल सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सो दाउ हाउ दिस पावर विल शिफ्ट फ्रॉम जुडिशियल टू एक्सिक्यूटिव इफ यू हैव यूपीएससी यूपीएससी इज अ पार्ट ऑफ एक्सिक्यूटिव इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट सो पावर विल शिफ्ट फ्रॉम जुडिशियल टू राइट एक्सिक्यूटिव एंड इट विल हैंपर द इंडिपेंडेंस ऑफ इंडियन जुडिशियरी it will have word that you know and where could be can see there are you no know, the advantages and disadvantages disadvantages of for the you know for uh for the uh, judicial services so we have seen right a uh, few challenges of indian judiciary we have seen major recommendation given by a niti ayog and we have also talked about the other recommendation that can be appropriate for the in the judiciary in order to remove those challenges and we have also discussed now the infrastructure problem right and let me talk about the you know let me talk about also the the fund crisis that in the judiciary faces right if you look at the budget budgetary allocations the you know per capita budgetary allocations uh, in on in the judiciary is lowest in india in the entire world right so that is the allocation of fund right we have seen also the inadequate infrastructure and we have seen how this inadequate infrastructure actually created problem right and actually it is you not know, a critical issue right now well, then we have seen the creation of of all india uh, all india services whether it may you uh, know be good or not so there is no actually black and white picture there is a great idea and we have seen you know the both pro and cons of all india digital services right with this i will stop here see you in the next video thank you